one of the reasons California, at least in my opinion, brings in so many illegal immigrants is that it inflates their census numbers, which then grants them more right, congressional right. seats and more electoral votes. Right. So I always tell people that, you know, they'll say illegal immigrants don't vote. They don't vote. And I'm like, well, at the, at the federal level, they don't need to. If the census tracks X many people and they get a, they, I think uh, in the 2010s, they had one extra congressional seat and electoral college vote. One out of 538 votes. You're absolutely right. That's 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 a lot of power to gain from doing what they're I doing. I think they're called ghost districts. Maxine yeah. Waters gets elected with like seven votes <laughs> because her district is all illegal aliens. But by now in California, I mean, they've been coming for a long time. They are voting in California. We're just bringing in more and more and more. And why don't the Republicans do anything about it? Um, and that's the donors want the cheap labor. Yeah, I had some of my best friends in California were illegal aliens from Mexico or, or whatever, and they would work for cash and then they would send it to Mexico. I don't even know if it was getting taxed. No, it's not. No, if it's, it's cash remittances. that's just going across the border, there's no way to tax it. Was like, it. My compassionate love was there, but the structural system wasn't working. It no, was it's very bad for our country. That's that's money that's being sucked out of our economy. And by the way, going directly into the pocket of Carlos Slim. Who's that? Um, the billionaire monopolist of Mexico. He's often um, competing with Elon as the richest man in the world. And how does he make it? By overcharging these poor Mexicans. So all that money going back is to pay for his industry. It's a very corrupt country, Mexico. Doesn't, doesn't he own some big media company or something? He, bought, he saved the New York Times. That's right, the New York Times. <laughs> is he, does he still a principal owner? No, but he stepped in at a crucial moment. To save them, they were teetering on on bankruptcy. Remember, I don't Man, know if you remember wow! We're talking about like Bloomberg buying it or somebody else buying it, and Carlos Slim sucked in. The, uh, was Fortune Forbes magazine had him as the richest man in the world from 2010 to 2013. Mm -hmm. Carlos. Okay. So what is he like? And he's selling the a gorgeous mansion in New York City for 80 million. It was just in the Daily Mail yesterday. Whoa! What part of the city is that in? Upper East Side. Wow, eighty million. What the? Across from the Met. It's magnificent. It's the red one, right? Yes. It's, it's so pretty. It's magnificent. What do we do about the drug cartels that are running people like drugs across the border? The wall. The wall solves so every problem in America gets easier with a wall. Every single problem, um, race relations, poor people, bringing manufacturing back, everything gets easier when you solve immigration because you don't have this, we don't need an extra problem to deal with, an extra poor people we have to pay for. But the drug problem, that's 100% a, a function of not having a wall. Oh, one of the interviews I just did on Substack, and I highly recommend you all watch it. It's with this guy, Sam Quinones, liberal journalist, but I've been a fan of his for a long time. He was a really good investigative reporter. You may have read him in the LA Times because his beat was crime and immigration. And he's the only block quote I have in Adios America, where it's like two paragraphs just from his one of his articles. Really, really good. And then he wrote what your audience may be more familiar with. He wrote the book Dreamland about the opioid crisis in America. And now most recently, um, The Least of Us about fentanyl. And he does the reporting. He knows the drug. He knew where the, all, all, all the... Um, the, uh, the meth was coming from. It was coming from like one town in Mexico. Now it's changed. It's gone out to the cartels. But he knows everything about the drug problem. It is not coming from China. It is, if, meth is being made in Mexico. The, the, the opioid, it is all coming from Mexico. Is it funded by the CCP? No, I don't think. Not, not that you would the, know the for sure. The reason the Chinese couldn't, they, it used to. Chinese used to send the precursor chemicals, or they would send the heroin directly, or they would send the meth directly. But the problem is, th that's all in individual, like, FedEx packages. And they do it. But for one thing, weirdly enough, the Chinese government actually did kind of step on them. But it was just inefficient. You, can't, you need to be on the border. <laughs> You need to get it straight across. And, you know, they'll say, oh, but it's not all Mexican. Some of them are American citizens. Yeah, they're anchor babies. It is an all Mexican operation. Interesting. I thought I've been thinking of it as a like just a continuation of the drug war, the opium wars, the, how the British set up shop yeah. in Taiwan and then just start shuffling yeah. opiates into China. And the Chinese never, you know, play the long game. But you're saying it's more of just a... a financial yes. Mexican issue right now. Do you yes. feel like since it's a financial... And I think, I'm sorry, no, just okay. to finish that, 
It is opium wars, but it is Americans against Americans. The same people who don't want a wall. Um, there is there is a crazy left. I'm not talking about all Democrats. Many liberals are my best friends. I'm not talking about all liberals at all. But there is an element of the left that just hates this country. And they're fine with Americans dying of opioids. They are fine with 100,000 Americans dying from drugs every year. Do you, these, have, these people also, uh, I guess paradoxically, don't even know what life outside of the United States is. They think the United States is evil and they have no idea they've never right. been to these other countries. Because if right. you go to these other countries yes. and you're like, wow, America's pretty nice. Yeah. For all the bad things. I, yes. I remember when I started traveling for Vice, after a couple of these countries, I come back to the U.S., and I, I got like randomly searched by the border patrol. They, they made me pull, their pa- pull my passport, went through my bag, and I'm just laughing. And then they like they they see the Arabic in my passport, and like what's this? And then I was like, I don't even remember what country that was. Egypt, I think, or something. Where did I go? I can't remember. And I, oh no no no, it was uh, Morocco. And they were like, oh. And then they were like, what's funny? And I'm like, I love this country, man. I'm like. It's just like everything's nice here. You know, I come back from, I was in Brazil or something and, you know, you see how, you see how good we have it. It's yeah. decentralized law enforcement is what I'm, I'm sold in the United States. Local cops is the key to prosperity. Having a federal system where they're like, they decide one day that this is illegal now and everyone in the country is The key like, to everything is the local. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally agree. And I didn't know that until I went to Cuba or to um, Chile and, and, Peru and like saw the federal cops on the corners. I'm like, we have no idea what it's like in other countries, especially because we are so used to complaining about America, right? Everyone's saying America's so racist and America has all these cop problems and like travel at all, go anywhere and you will be happy to be here. Do you think that Mexico poses enough of a threat to American lives to be worth invading at any point? Um, I, it wouldn't be necessary if we built the wall. Yeah. Um, but yes, to take out the cartels, I mean, it's certainly more of a threat to us than Ukraine. Right. I mean, we sent a ton of money shipping goods and resources to Ukraine. Why wouldn't we just spend that money on the wall? On Well, not only the wall, but as for, you know, going into their country. Um, I mean, I don't know. This is kind of racy. But yeah, take out the cartels if they can't do it by themselves. We went and we got, remember that guy, Pineapple Face? The first George Bush sent... Um, U.S. troops. He was. He was. I think I was like four years old. Okay. The pineapple face <laughs> is a pineapple solid face. nickname. Here, I'll look it up. Just <laughs> pineapple, pineapple face. He had George Bush. Like in the late eighties. It was a big thing, but it was the first. It was the first George Bush sent in our, our military to to, to, to Nor- seize Manuel this guy. Noriega. Yeah. Manuel Noriega. I typed no. pineapple face, and he showed up on Google on the Google search. <laughs> really? Pineapple yeah. Panamanian, but that's Panama. Does it say Bush? That isn't. I, maybe I wouldn't have guessed that. That's a funny. Uh, Why are you nickname? thinking about him though? Because we sent the military to get him. I'm pretty sure that was Noriega. That was your question. We've yeah. done it before. And wait, if I could get back to your point on local police force, it's not just the police. Look at the COVID rules. Thank, thank God, I'm not taking the Lord's name in vain. Thank God, we could go to places like Florida. What if? I mean, sh- Trump did shut down the country. You know. Because he's he's so for, for freedom, um, but New York, California versus versus Texas. Actually, Texas wasn't that good. Georgia was good. Florida was good. I don't know whatever places you were looking at moving to in twenty twenty. You will remember. Everything should be local. Give us a choice. Let us vote with our feet. Yeah, military centralization of military authority, law making, and dude, the the medical tyranny. Is yeah. I am on alert for medical tyranny. I know the Nazis did lots of medical science experiments on living people, and I'm not down with that well, in real time. We're doing it on adolescent girls right now. Yeah, we are, and they're miserable. I mean, with medical tyranny during COVID, the local governments were the most likely to resist, right? Bigger yes. cities and everyone else were more likely to give in. If you went to any small town in America, they operated differently. They operated independently because they know their community and they know what they can handle. Or the third largest state in the union, mm-hmm. Florida. Oh, hey. <laughs> so what? What this um, gun running that Obama did, the Fast and Furious program, was he sending arms to the cartels? Is that what happened? Um, what happened was, that's a, wow, that's a blast from the past. Um, no. Yes. Yes, he was. 
And the reason they weren't intentionally, hey, we have a program, let's end the... Well, although that was the suspicion of a lot of Republicans. They wanted crimes being committed with American guns. Um, what they claimed to be doing was putting tracers on the guns they were sending. And then they could follow where the guns were going and they could see where the cartel's hideout is. And we could follow the cartels, except the way it was being done was so sloppy a lot of the guns didn't have tracers on them way more than were necessary they didn't follow where the guns were going which made some people think you just want an argument to say all this cartel violence is being done with american guns we need more restrictions on buying guns in america i keep i'm concerned about like um actively giving our weapons to other people so that we can test our own weapons against our own weapons. Like in the Ukraine, we surrender, or not in Ukraine, geez, the in surrender. Afghanistan. We surrendered in Ukraine, and guys, that's what I'm about to say. Uh, yeah, in Afghanistan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Biden surrenders the military in Afghanistan to the Taliban, the greatest military on earth. He surrendered it to this local militant group, the Taliban, for some reason. Um, and what is that reason? Well, at first I just thought it was incompetence. Now I'm wondering if Lockheed wants their arms in the hands of oh, yeah. enemies so that they can test their weapons because no, no, no. they have not, no test grounds not otherwise. Not just test, but so that there's a reason to sell more weapons. Yes. Oh, oh no, the Taliban now has, you know, Blackhawks and Scud missiles or whatever. Yes. So we, we're going to have to buy more from us. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.